Good morning. This morning, I'm going to start with an update about our overdoses and fentanyl-related overdoses, and then move into the COVID update. This weekend, a news release was issued warning Islanders of the presence of fentanyl, a highly potent opiate in the province following an accidental overdose involving the drug. This most recent fentanyl-related accidental overdose death brings our total to three accidental opiate-related overdose deaths involving fentanyl in 2020. The first of these occurred in May, a female in her 20s. The case investigation is now closed. It was an accidental mixed drug overdose death involving fentanyl. The second occurred in early July, a male in his 20s. The case investigation is now closed. It was also an accidental mixed drug overdose death involving fentanyl. The third occurred this past Friday. The coroner reported an accidental overdose death involving fentanyl, a man in his 40s, to Summerside Police and to the Chief Public Health Office late on Friday. Investigations are still ongoing. Surveillance for accidental opiate-related deaths began in 2016, and prior to 2020, PI recorded one fentanyl-related death in 2016 and one in 2018. It's important to note that not all accidental opiate-related overdoses are fatal. The majority, 96% of accidental overdose cases involved mi involve mixed toxicology. So that's one or more opiates combined with one or more non-opiate substances such as alcohol. From January to March of 2020, there were no cases. And from April to June, there were nine overdose cases not resulting in death, six of which involved fentanyl. And from July to September, at least three overdoses have involved fentanyl, and uh, these were non-fatal. Anyone consuming street drugs, not only opiates, but any drug in pill or powdered form, should take steps to reduce the risks, carry naloxone, and inform others who may use drugs that naloxone is available. If an individual feels that they need a naloxone kit, they can contact the Provincial Needle Exchange Program toll-free by calling 1-877-637-0333 or visit a program site. Free kits are also available to clients of mental health and addiction programs and select community groups. And there is more information online. And then now moving to our COVID update. So there are no new cases of COVID-19 to report today. We currently have three active cases of COVID-19 in the province. These individuals are doing well and remain at home in self-isolation. Since the pandemic began, we have had 61 cases of COVID-19 in the province, and all of our cases have been travel-related. We are now seeing the impact of the second wave of COVID-19 in other provinces. In the last week, we saw an increasing number of cases uh, diagnosed in Canada. There was an alarming rate of increase, particularly in Ontario, Quebec, but also Manitoba. Ontario and Quebec accounting for 78% of the new cases last week. Nationally, the daily case counts of COVID-19 are in the same range as we had in April in the initial phases during the first wave of the pandemic. Hospitalizations and deaths are also increasing across much of Canada. While Atlantic Canada continues to report low case counts, we are paying close attention to what is happening in our other provinces. It is concerning to hear about the necessary but restrictive measures being reinstated and health systems being overwhelmed. The strain on the health systems experienced in other parts of Canada could occur in PEI if we had a small number of cases of COVID-19 with a large number of close contacts, or if we had a number of individuals with the virus needing critical care. It is for this very reason that we will maintain our pre-approval travel process, border security, 
and screening and operation isolation. These measures have been key factors in keeping our case count low in PEI. We will also continue to increase our capacity for testing and contact tracing. Last week, the rules regarding isolation and testing for workers who travel were clarified, and these changes are outlined in an order pursuant to the Public Health Act. We recognize some island residents who travel outside the Atlantic bubble must go back to their workplace when they return to PEI. Previously, some people have identified themselves as essential workers, and all of these individuals now have to apply under the worker travel stream. We are really moving away from the term essential worker. In reality, all work is important and essential to the individual. The changes that came into effect on Friday provide more options for PEI residents who must travel outside the Atlantic provinces and have to go back to their workplace when they return home. Effective October 2nd, these individuals must apply for approval to work isolate and the application form is available on the provincial website. I am relieved to know that these changes are now in effect. And over the past few weeks, it was clear that some individuals were not isolating when they should. And in some cases, this behavior was unintentional and clear communication will help. I have been concerned about the lack of clarity regarding the requirement to self-isolate or work isolate uh, for a period of time because it meant Islanders were at greater risk of importation of COVID-19 into the province, especially when we see the increasing number of cases in other provinces. So this approval process hopefully will help provide clarity regarding who is work isolating and who is a rotational worker. And it will allow greater transparency and improve our ability to enforce the requirements to work isolating, to work isolate, including routine testing at regular intervals. And it's, it's worth highlighting that testing is not a means of getting out of isolation it, and testing does not replace self-isolation. For individuals who must return to their workplace following travel out of the bubble, they must apply for and be approved for work isolation with the support of their employer. Over 12,000 people have successfully completed self-isolation in PEI. And while many individuals would rather not have to self-isolate or work isolate, the great majority recognize the importance of following the rules for the sake of their health and the health of others. Islanders can be reassured steps have been taken to ensure individuals traveling to PEI from outside Atlantic Canada will know exactly what is required in terms of self-isolation or work, isolations, work isolation. And these measures will lower the risk of importation of COVID-19. We will be stepping up our enforcement efforts and ask for Islanders continued to support in reporting individuals who are not adhering to the work isolation or self-isolation rules. As plans uh, begin uh, really for Thanksgiving, I urge Islanders to keep their gatherings small and explore creative options to celebrate with family and loved ones this weekend. I know that this approach is challenging for some people who traditionally have very large Thanksgiving dinners and family get togethers. Keeping our gatherings small and scaling back and celebrating is not going to be the norm forever, but it is necessary this year. Personal gatherings in a private residence are limited to a maximum of 20 people, provided there continues to be room to maintain physical distancing and good public health practices can be followed. So please be judicious in deciding to attend events outside your household. And just because you know people at an event, it does not reduce the risk of transmission of COVID-19. And along the same line, and we're getting questions already, I know many families are beginning to make plans for Christmas holiday season, and they are hoping that family and loved ones from off island can come home for the holidays. Alternatively, some island residents may want to visit family outside Atlantic Canada. For islanders who choose to travel outside the Atlantic bubble at Christmas, at this stage, there likely will still be a requirement to self-isolate when they return to Prince Edward Island. For family who travel to PEI from outside the Atlantic bubble, it is likely the requirement to self-isolate for 14 days will remain in place throughout the Christmas season. 
It is possible for family to travel to PI from outside Atlantic Canada, provided they receive pre-approval under the Family Connection Stream with the requirement to self-isolate for 14 days. And we recognize as well that this is challenging for students, for instance, returning home for the holidays. For individuals traveling to and from PI within Atlantic Canada, and uh, assuming the Atlantic bubble is still in place, there will no, be no requirement for that period of 14 days self-isolation. This is something that we will continue to look at over the next eight to 10 weeks and reassess as we go. Um, and, and it's possible that other options for Christmas travel and family gatherings may be feasible, but certainly at this stage, the self-isolation requirement is in place. Now that fall is here, community rinks are planning for a busy hockey, ringette, speed skating, and figure skating season. And like all other aspects of our society, COVID-19 dictates that things are different in our rinks this year. Rinks can, right now, host multiple cohorts of 50 people, participants, spectators, parents, provided that they have an operational plan and have one approved by our office. And these cohorts cannot mix and uh, consideration of entrances and exits and physical distancing must be maintained. And we know that the capacity of each rink varies in terms of numbers of entrances and ability to stagger arrival and departure and the ability to have uh, maintain that physical distancing. But while individual facilities are responsible for submitting an operational plan, efforts are now underway to assist facility managers to maximize the number of players, family members, and spectators that can attend events in rinks across the province. PEI will be launching the Voluntary National COVID Alert app this Thursday, October 8th. The app will let you know if you may have been in contact with someone who has tested positive for COVID-19. If you decide to install the app, your phone sends out a randomly generated code via Bluetooth to any other smartphones within range which also have the app. So if you ever test positive for COVID-19 during the follow-up with public health uh, nursing, you will be asked if you have the app and if you wish to use the notification function. If you wish to do this, you will receive a one-time key to activate the notification. Other users who have downloaded the app and have come in contact with you will be notified via the app that they have potentially been exposed to the virus. The app will anonymously notify others who have been also using the app and who may have been in close contact, so less than two meters, for a period of time, for 15 minutes, that they have uh, potentially been exposed to the virus. Notification is anonymous and information limited. The app will direct those who are notified here in Prince Edward Island to go and be tested. The app does not use GPS or track a user's particular geographic location. It does not share a person's name, address, or telephone contacts, and does not collect or store any personal health information. The app is available free of charge to Canadians and can be downloaded through the app or Google Play stores and for Islanders uh, that will start on Thursday. Traditional contact tracing by public health will still continue. It's important to note that this is just one tool to assist in managing COVID-19 and does not replace traditional public health measures such as contact tracing. So I do encourage Islanders to consider downloading the app. While COVID-19 is impacting Thanksgiving plans for many Islanders, we can take time to reflect on this past year and the people and things in our lives that we are thankful for. We can be thankful that to date PEI has been successful in containing the spread of COVID-19 in our province. We can be thankful for the generosity of Islanders and their genuine willingness to adhere to public health measures, protecting the health of themselves and the health of others. We can be thankful for the many thousands of hardworking, caring and dedicated workers providing services to Islanders during this pandemic, including our healthcare workers and the whole system 
teachers, bus drivers, our grocery store workers, our media, our journalists, restaurant workers, and the list goes on. We can be thankful that, to date, those most vulnerable to COVID-19 and PEI have been spared of the serious effects of COVID-19, including residents in long-term care and others in communal living arrangements. We can be thankful that we can travel freely to our neighboring provinces and for the success of the Atlantic bubble. And we can be thankful to live in such a beautiful province with kind, caring, and resilient people. And I am thankful for you. I hope everyone has a safe and happy Thanksgiving holiday. Please continue to be compassionate to yourself and to others. Please continue to be patient. Please continue to be kind. Thank you. And I'll open it up for questions. Brian Higgins, CBC. Hi, Dr. Morrison. Uh, a question about the two active cases that were reported Sunday, I believe it was. Uh, it was reported that they had traveled outside the Atlantic bubble. Can you tell us, was that, were they international travelers or merely travelers within Canada? Um, hi, Brian. Uh, so, um, one, uh, both were outside the bubble. One is related to international travel, and uh, the other um, case had more travel within uh, within Canada, but outside of uh, the Atlantic bubble. Thank you. And uh, I think today you said that uh, enforcement will be stepped up, if I heard that correctly. Can you tell us more about what that means? And I'm curious with the work isolation, that seems to suggest a loosening of, of uh, restrictions, but uh, uh, could, you, could you tell us more about that? Well, I, I think um, when we're trying to clarify those people who um, are rotational workers and need to be tested regularly, um, but also um, certain workers who um, may need to return to work um, but uh, would need to work isolate and work isolation and I know we've talked about it before means that uh, um, while certain precautions are put in place while they're at work uh, wearing masks maintaining a six foot distance um, going to the grocery store public functions going out to eat at restaurants is not um, uh, allowed in any type of self-isolation or work isolation. And uh, so I think it's, um, as we're clarifying uh, that isolation process and realizing that there may be some people who have um, either, uh, you know, even unintentionally not been uh, following some of those isolation requirements, uh, it is something that we have talked to our enforcement colleagues about and we'll have more conversation in the, in the days ahead about uh, making sure people are um, isolating but also making sure people are tested um, as, uh, uh, as we've laid out and, um, and so it's, uh, uh, I think it's an important part of the process. Uh, we see what's happening in the rest of the country and we're trying to um, acknowledge that some people do have to work he, uh, in Prince Edward Island um, and but also wanting to make sure that uh, those who need to be isolating whether that's self-isolating or work isolating continue to do so it has um, made a difference here and um, we need to be, continue to be careful in the weeks ahead thank you Shane Ross CBC hello um, I have a question about taxis uh, can you explain what the protocol is for people flying in from outside the Atlantic bubble who need to travel to a place to isolate? Are they allowed to take a cab or do they need to arrange to have a car waiting for them? Uh, so Shane, it's a good question. So when we are asked if someone is coming in to, and it's a planned self-isolation uh, requirement, uh, we've um, but sometimes people have left uh, a car for them at the airport that they can uh, pick up and drive directly to their location of self-isolation. Um, and, uh, and if they um, were to take a taxi and they need to go to self-isolation, um, they should be in the back seat um, as far away from the driver as possible and, um, and have a ma mask on 
uh, at all times. Okay. Uh, my second question is, is about weddings. Uh, COVID-19 affected a lot of weddings over the summer. And uh, we'd like to know whether public health officials monitored or dropped by any of those weddings and asked to see the operational plans and if action was taken against any wedding gatherings. Uh, so uh, a good question. I don't know um, which uh, if there were weddings uh, that were dropped in on by public health officials or and I think it really would be um, if there was a complaint or concern identified um, that that would have been brought to our office but uh, I I wasn't made aware of any but uh, certainly I can find out if there was a the the weddings uh, should have had uh, an operational plan um, any wedding that had more than 50 people um, would have needed approval from the office and uh, so uh, those were there was a lot of back and forth uh, with uh, organizers um, as part of those uh, approval process but in the smaller ones I would uh, I'd have to check Shane thank you Alison Jenkins the garden yes good morning um, just wondering about the overdose deaths and the increase of non-fatal overdose. Um, is there enough help for those people? It sounds like there's been an increase, um, whether it's presence of new drugs or increase in addictions. Just wondering if you can elaborate a little bit on, on some of the context behind um, what this has, what has this revealed to you, I guess, and what are you doing about it? Well, and um, hi, Allison. Uh, I think, uh, w and we spoke a little bit about it earlier in in uh, the summer too, that, um, and I and I know we're going to be doing more of it. Uh, there's a, a, f a few things. One, uh, we have put in place um, a Narcan alert system uh, with. Um, EMS, so that if Narcan is administered, it will flag, uh, create an automatic flag so that uh, we're aware of it. And that's part of a surveillance, ongoing surveillance. Uh, there, um, we have certainly communicated with uh, a letter went out to all our physicians and nurse practitioners uh, over the summer, alerting them to um, be aware and to test for uh, in overdoses for fentanyl. Um, we met again this summer with our enforcement colleagues about a rapid response uh, plan with uh, regards to overdoses, um, particularly opioid related overdoses. And uh, that's always really helpful to have that communication with coroner and the police services and, and our, our office. Um, there's, uh, I know we are, uh, and I've spoken to them just this morning about increased communication campaign, um, and uh, and I think that's going to be really important in in the days ahead. Um, we've uh, I, there's been discussion about uh, peers uh, uh, working with peers um, alliance the uh, hotline. Um, and as a, a project to be put in place um, for people who may be using, and, and I think that'll be really important. Uh, so it's it's a variety of uh, approaches that we need to not to continue, but to augment um, as we um, at look at what's happening here, and and also around the country. This is. Um, They've seen the situation in other parts of the country, and it is uh, of grave concern, and uh, and we uh, need to continue to do more. So uh, um, I think you'll see more um, from uh, about um, overdoses uh, and uh, and what we can do to continue to educate uh, everyone. Great, thank you very much. Um, my next question is about uh, the serology test. Just wondering where that's at and what the update is. Is there a test been picked, et cetera? Uh, yes, so um, the the serology uh, tests, I, I think you're speaking about the immunity uh, serology and that has been something we've been talking about for a number of months. It has um, received uh, ethics approval for uh, the 
the immunity serology study and so the details are being worked out. We have someone in our office working on it as well and uh, as along with the lab and so we anticipate uh, shortly having uh, some more uh, details about that. Great, thank you very much. Rachel Collier, Eastern Graphic. Hi, um, I have a couple questions about testing. Uh, I'm wondering if you might know how many tests have been administered at each drop-in site at this point, and uh, maybe if since those drop-in sites have opened, has testing increased overall, or has it changed? Maybe it's decreased. Who knows? Um, hi. So. Yes, over, overall the testing numbers have increased, um, and, and that's particularly since uh, the beginning of September. We've noticed an increase in uh, in testing, and that uh, has had to do with, uh, I think, our easing of public health measures, but also uh, people back to work and, and school. Um, there were, in last week, 23% of tests were among those who were less than 19 years of age. Um, and that's actually a little bit less than the previous week in that age group. Um, there is um, there was actually a nine percent decrease in the tests number of tests last week compared to the week before, but overall up uh, since August, we have had over thirty seven thousand eight hundred tests uh, performed in Prince Edward Island, and since last Tuesday, two thousand four hundred and twenty three tests have been performed. Um, so that's a, a fairly large number. PEI continues to be second uh, highest in tests per capita in the country um, in terms of number of tests uh, per population. I'll have the numbers for each drop-in site here with you today. I don't have them per uh, drop-in site, um, but those so those reflected uh, um, an overall, uh, as I mentioned, just overall increase in cases, at personal gathering limits, and of course there are organized events that have uh, different gathering limits, um, and uh, those are the ones that need a, an operational plan. Okay, thanks for all your info. Laurent Rigaud, La Bonjour, Dr. Morrison. J'avais une question sur le plan de nouvelle normalité que vous avez, qui, qui a démarré le 1er octobre. Est-ce que maintenant les restaurants peuvent accueillir plus que 50 personnes s'ils ont des salles différentes Quelle est la règle pour les restaurants aujourd'hui à Lille euh, alors, bonjour Laurent. Euh, c'est euh, la nouvelle normalité, c'est pour les restos, et même avant la nouvelle normalité, les restos euh, pouvaient avoir plus de 50 pour, euh, personnes euh, s'ils si euh, ont un plan euh, euh, qu'on peut voir au, au bureau. Euh, alors, ils peuvent mettre peut-être 40 euh, dans un euh, un moitié du resto et 30 dans l'autre, um, mais il faut garder la distance physique um, et, um, et avoir un plan de ne pas avoir les deux parties du restaurant qui uh, 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 sont uh, uh, mêlées, ils ne vont pas qu'il va d'un côté à l'autre, um, mais on, a, on les a parlé et puis on a clarifié qu'il peut avoir plus de 50 euh, depuis un bout de temps, mais euh, il faut avoir un, un plan euh, pour nous montrer. D'accord, merci. Et j'avais une autre question. Vous l'avez dit en anglais, mais j'aurais aimé avoir la réponse en, en français sur Thanksgiving et Halloween qui arrivent. Est-ce que, euh, que, quelles sont les recommandations Est-ce qu'on peut avoir une grosse fête de famille Est-ce qu'on peut aller chez des gens différents Qu'est-ce que vous euh, préconisez pour euh, ces fêtes um, Pour, euh, je pense que c'est l'action de grâce. Euh, um, et pour les autres fêtes, euh, um, on veut que si vous euh, êtes en famille ou, euh, ou avec les, les amis, ça devrait être 20 personnes ou moins. Um, et puis, mais, et même avec 20 personnes, il faut garder euh, um, au moins que, autant que possible la, la distance physique et laver les mains. Um, et, euh, et puis, 
prendre soin de, de sortir seulement si vous avez euh, vraiment... Euh, Pensez-y avant d'avoir beaucoup d'activités euh, sociales, euh, de garder les, euh, euh, les activités euh, entre un nombre de personnes qui soient un peu plus petites que normal. Je sais qu'il y en a les familles qui, euh, normalement, euh, ont beaucoup, beaucoup de gens euh, pour fêter ensemble et ce n'est pas l'année pour en faire. Um, alors, et, et puis, il faut prendre soin de, de, euh, que y a des personnes qui sont malades ne sont pas là et si vous ne sommes uh, pas bien, il ne faut pas inviter les autres et uh, de laver les mains, pas, pas partager les ustensiles entre euh, quand vous avez un repas et, euh, et, et, et autant que possible garder la distance physique. Merci beaucoup. François-Pierre Dufour, Radio-Canada. François-Pierre Dufour, Radio-Canada. I think that's it. So, uh, thank you very much. Happy Thanksgiving.